So inflation refers to the uh, general increase of the prices of goods and services in an economy. And it can be driven by numerous factors. So one form of uh, factors that drive inflation is so-called supply uh, driven inflation. So think of an increase in production costs. So if wages or uh, energy uh, costs increase, then firms have to raise their prices so the general price level will increase. On the other hand, inflation can also be driven by an increase in demand. So if consumers demand more products, firms are then uh, able to increase their prices and that will also increase the general price level. So both supply and demand can drive inflation in general. High inflation rates are considered bad for the economy for a number of reasons. Let me give you one example. Imagine you have a life insurance contract that promises to pay 100,000 euros in 10 years. Now, at an inflation rate like we have it currently at roughly 5%, this means that the purchasing power of these 100,000 euros declines to about 60,000 euros. So the purchasing power of your life insurance contract roughly halves. For the last decade, inflation has been very subdued. We have seen inflation rates far below the target of the European Central Bank or ECB of roughly 2%. So why is there suddenly this surge in inflation? There are a number of factors. One is the already mentioned supply and demand factors. So think of consumers who weren't able to spend their income during the pandemic because of lockdowns and now with the lockdowns lifted they want to consume and therefore demand surges and firms are able to increase prices. On the other hand we also have a number of supply factors that drive this inflation surge. Um, think of the supply chain disruptions around the globe. So it's very expensive right now to ship goods from China to Europe, for example, as containers are scarce. We measure inflation, and let me take the example of the inflation rate in November, for example, by comparing the general price level in this year's November to that of November in 2020. So it's year on year. Now, last year, we had a number of special factors that pushed down prices. One was the cut in the value-added tax in Germany. So the value-added tax was reduced from 19 to 16 percent um, and that led to a decrease in prices for many goods. Then there was also a decrease in energy prices because of the lack of demand due to the pandemic. So the oil price, for example, was quite low last year, which also led a downward push in the general price level. Now we go to this year's November and we compare the prices this November to those artificially suppressed prices during last year's November and voila, you get inflation just mechanically through these effects. Whether inflation will stay as high as we observe it right now is one of the hottest debates in economic policy circles right now. There are reasons why we would expect inflation to go down again. So one thing is the aforementioned special factors. So for example, the VAT cut will be gone from the statistic in January. Also, we already see that energy prices have plateaued and are expected to rather decrease than to further increase. But then on the other hand, there are also factors that are hard to get a grip on. For example, the supply chain disruptions are hard to forecast. In a sense, we don't know how the new variant of the uh, virus, for example, will disrupt supply chains again. We don't know how labor markets uh, will react uh, to new lockdown measures, for example. So it's not clear whether these supply-driven factors of in the inflation surge will be gone early next year. Um, but if you ask the European Central Bank, for example, they still forecast that inflation will return to their target of 2% on average at the end of next year.